Okay, Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. So in our last video, we already discussed about the three domain system. Okay, so three domain system is proposed by Carl Woods. So now we proceed to domain bacteria and domain archaea. Okay, so as you know, for three domain system, it will divide into three domain. The first one are domain bacteria, second domain archaea and another one domain eukarya. So now let's discuss first about domain bacteria and domain archaea. So if you look at this handout, okay, so... Actually, both domain bacteria and domain archaea we considered as prokaryotes. So that's why, based on the unique characteristic, so you can explain based on the unique characteristic of prokaryote. Okay, so firstly, we look at the first unique characteristic. So, first one based on the cell wall. So for prokaryote, its cell wall contains peptidoglycan except for archaea bacteria so means that based on the structure of the cell wall it contain peptidoglycan but for domain archaea it does not contain peptidoglycan this one is really refers only for domain bacteria okay and then second it is unicellular organism so what is the meaning of unicellular unicellular means it consists of only one cell and then next there is no true nucleus okay so for both domain bacteria and domain archaea since it is prokaryote so there is no nucleus okay and then its dna is lies free in the cytoplasm and its chromosome is concentrated in nucleot so what is nucleot so remember nucleot is the region where dna of the prokaryote is located okay and then next there is no membrane bar organelle okay then most are heterotroph so what is the meaning of heterotroph okay so uh, for prokaryote, uh, it will obtain it. Uh, it will obtain its nutrient from the other organism. Okay, or it will obtain uh, its organic compound from the other organism. Okay, and then some are autotroph. Okay, so what is autotroph? It can synthesize their own organic compound. So example of photoautotroph is cyanobacteria or blue-green algae. And then example of chemoautotroph is sulfolobus species. Okay, remember, so since sulfolobus species is a scientific name, so you have to underline the sulfolobus, buat satu garisan, and then sp dot. Okay, so make sure you know how to write the scientific name correctly. Okay, and then uh, next, many prokaryotes surrounded by capsule. Okay, so what is the function of capsule? It will provide protection against host immune system. Okay, maksudnya, since prokaryote, it has capsule. So, let's say if the bacteria, okay, if the bacteria cell uh, is located inside of the organism, so capsule ni boleh provide protection, okay, against host immune system and also it will protect against dehydration. Okay, and then next, some have flagella. So, the function of flagella is for movement. Okay, and then next, some have pili. Okay, so pili is involved in the process of conjugation. So, what is conjugation? It is the process by which uh, genetic material is exchanged, okay, between the bacteria. Okay, and then next, it have plasmid. So, what is plasmid? This one you have already learned in SEM1. So, it is circular or double-stranded DNA that replicates within cell independently of chromosomal DNA. Okay, so if you look at the structure of the prokaryotic cell. Okay, so let's say this is the prokaryotic cell. Okay, so prokaryotic cell here, it has outer membrane. Okay, and then it has cell wall. So, remember, for domain bacteria, its cell wall contain peptidoglycan. But for domain archaea, its cell wall does not contain peptidoglycan. And then it's, it has capsule. So, remember, the function of capsule is for protection against host immune system. Okay, and then for bacteria or prokaryote, it has plasma membrane. Okay, then nucleot region. So, remember, nucleot is the region where DNA of the prokaryote is located. Next, it has ribosome, pilus. Okay, so pilus involved in the process of conjugation. Another one, flagellum. Okay, so flagellum is for movement. Okay. Okay, so next we look at the differences between domain bacteria and domain archaea. So, uh, these are the criteria uh, criteria that you have to know. Okay, so first one, we look at the example. So, for domain bacteria, the example is E. coli. So, remember, since E. coli is scientific name, so you have to underline. It is compulsory. You have to underline the scientific name. Okay, so how to underline E, one line, coli, one line. So, you have to separate. Okay, and then the example for domain RK is sulfolobus species. This one also you have to underline because this is scientific name. Okay, and then 
Next criteria, peptidoglycan in the cell wall. So for domain bacteria, peptidoglycan present in cell wall. While for domain RK, peptidoglycan absent in cell wall. Okay, and then next criteria, association of histone to the DNA. For domain bacteria, DNA does not associate with histone protein. For domain RK, DNA associated with histone protein in some species. Okay, and then the structure of the membrane lipid. For domain bacteria, it is unbranched fatty acid, which is fatty acid bonded to glycerol by ester linkage. While for domain RK, it, some have branched fatty acid, which is fatty acid bonded to glycerol by ether linkage. Okay, and then another one, the habitat for domain bacteria, it will live in normal habitat. While for domain RK, it will live in extreme habitat. For the example, acidic, salty and hot environment. Okay, so now let's proceed to diversity of bacteria. Okay, so based on diversity of bacteria, we can classify the bacteria based on the cell shape, gram stain and also the position of flagella. Okay, so firstly, we look at the cell shape. Okay, so the cell, uh, the shape of the bacteria, uh, the first one we call as caucus. So caucus means spherical shape. Okay, so the circle here, so spherical shape refers to caucus. And then second, uh, bacillus. Bacillus means rod shape. Okay, another one, spirillum. So, spirillum is spiral shape. Okay, so next, uh, we look at the gram stain. Okay, so actually, what is gram stain? Okay, so here, gram staining. So, gram staining, actually, it is a method where bacteria cell are stained with crystal violet solution. Okay, and then it is followed by iodine. So, means that gram staining. Staining means perwarnaan. Okay, so, upper to gram staining. It is a method where bacteria cell are stained with crystal violet solution. So, the first solution that are uh, used in the gram staining technique uh, crystal violet and then after crystal violet it is followed by iodine okay and then next what happened the crystal violet iodine complex is formed at peptidoglycan layer which is it will shows the purple color okay and then it will wash with alcohol so the next step okay we use the alcohol okay and then lastly uh, the finally counter stain with safranin solution. So actually safranin solution ni warna dia macam red color. Okay, so what happen when gram staining method is applied? Okay, so we can classify the bacteria into two types. Either it uh, it was gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria. So what are the difference between gram positive and also gram negative bacteria? For gram positive bacteria, it has thick layer of peptidoglycan in the cell wall, okay, which trap the crystal violet in cyto. Okay, so since the gram positive bacteria, it has the thick layer of peptidoglycan, when we apply the crystal violet color, so the uh, peptidoglycan in the cell wall will trap the crystal violet in the cytoplasm. So that's why gram positive bacteria will stain purple color. So they can jadi warna purple. So example of gram positive bacteria is Staphylococcus species. Okay, and then for gram negative bacteria, what is the difference between gram negative and also gram positive? Kalau gram positive bacteria, it has thick layer of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. While for gram negative, it has a thin layer of pe peptidoglycan in the cell wall. Okay, so for gram negative bacteria, it will stain pink or red. So example of gram negative bacteria is E. coli. Okay, so why gram negative bacteria will stain Stain pink or red. Okay, kalau kita tengok based on the method of gram staining tadi. So, since once we apply the crystal violet uh, solution followed by iodine. Okay, next we use the alcohol. Okay, so if it is gram positive bacteria, bila kita letakkan alcohol, there is no effect to the crystal violet iodine complex. So, that's why they akan remain purple color even though last kali kita letakkan dengan safranin solution. But, if it uh, if it is a gram negative bacteria, okay, bila kita letakkan alcohol, so what happened to the crystal violet iodine stain, okay, the purple color tadi, it will be washed out. So that's why yang akan tinggal adalah the color of safranin which is the red color. So yang tu beza antara gram positive and also gram negative bacteria, okay. Next, we look at the position of the flagella. So, there are four types of position of flagella. Okay, so based on your notes, awak uh, uh, 
uh, apa tu keluarkan lah yang point number 5 dekat sini ok so the first one we call as monotricious second lofotricious third amphitricious and another one peritricious so what uh, monotricious it is a single flagellum that can extend from one end of the cell lofotricious two or more flagella at one end of the cell okay so this is the diagram of lofotricious okay and then the amphitricious it is a stuff of flagella at each end of the cell another one peritricious the flagella distribute over the entire cell okay Okay, and then the lastly, we look at the importance of bacteria. So, there are four importance here. The first one, recycling of chemical elements in ecosystem. So, the example, it will function as decomposers. And then second, ecological interaction. Okay, for example, in symbiotic relationship between E. coli and human intestine. And then third, pathogenic. So, what is pathogenic? It is the bacteria that can cause disease. Okay, another one, medical research and technology. The example, bacteria used in sewage treatment and oil spill degradation. Okay, so that's all for domain bacteria and domain archaea.